Please pray with me. Holy God, we know that Christ is risen, and like the disciples, we wonder what that means for us. Open our minds, make us new, and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at church and at home. Good to have everybody worshiping together this morning. I have so many pieces of paper. I'm going to try to set a couple down so I don't juggle and drop stuff because, you know, the struggle is real. All right. Well, if you are visiting today and you would like more information, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, Simply go to the website, oursaviorslc.org. Be sure to include the U in Saviors and click on the online connection card that you'll find there in the scrolling pictures that go across. Uh, Works great whether you are here or at home. So thanks for doing that. A reminder that pre-registration for limited indoor in-person worship is no longer required. It's still recommended. It makes check-in go lots faster for everybody. Um, But if you have a last-minute change of plan Sunday morning, just remember that registration in advance is not required. Um, We have a First Communion class coming up on Saturday, May 1st. Information about that, all the details are on the website under the announcements section. And also, if you're in the building this morning, they are in your bulletin as well, in a little side column there. Today, we will be sharing Holy Communion as part of worship this morning. So if you're at home, you'll want to gather wine and bread or bread and wine or grape juice for that. If you're here in the building, you should have gotten communion elements from the ushers. If you still need those, just hop back and see an usher and they will help you out. Thank you to Director of Confirmation and Youth Ministries, Leisha Taze. She's helping lead worship this morning. She's doing the children's message, which is excellent. Um, So thank you for helping out as Pastor Kiri is taking a well-earned Sunday off uh, while finishing up her daughter's soccer tournament. So... All right, let's see. Um, After worship, join Leisha online for Zoom coffee hour. Link is on the website. And a few reminders for those of you who are in the building for worship this morning. Thank you for keep wearing your mask over both your mouth and your nose as we while you are in the building this morning. That's so important as we do our best to keep one another safe. Um, The band and the words to the songs will be on the screen this morning. Just let the music wash over you. We're not quite at a place where we can do congregational singing yet. At the end of worship, please remain seated until an usher dismisses you. And at that point, you'll want to take everything with you, including garbage. And at the doors, as you leave the worship space today, you will find garbage cans, recycling, and offering baskets. So all that is at the doors for you this morning. And after worship, normally we don't do this, but it's a pandemic. So after worship, we lovingly ask you to exit the building and chat with one another outside. It is beautiful out there. So it's a great day to stay around for a little bit and talk to one another outside. I think that's all the announcements. I feel like I should have a post-it note falling or something somewhere, but it was just those. So we're good. (laughs) We continue our worship this morning with our scripture. Our reading today is from 1 John, the third chapter. God has loved us, making us children of God, though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence. We trust that God will reveal it, just as God revealed Jesus, to take away our sins. Now the reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When Christ is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. I have a little message um, for our young people. But we all know that we all like a good children's sermon, right? So really, this is for everybody. Um, But I am here for a while today. Um, Been here since early this morning, have some stuff after this. So I'm going to be here over lunchtime. So I packed my lunch. And I'm wondering if you can guess what I'm having for lunch. So I'm going to show you some ingredients. Adults, you can play along too. Here's my first ingredient. 
I brought some bread. Any guesses? What do you think? Peanut butter and jelly? Good guess. I could make peanut butter and jelly with this bread. Absolutely. What if I showed you this? A stick of butter. Butter sandwich? Mmm. Grilled cheese? I heard grilled cheese. Other guesses? Toast? Maybe some buttered toast? I like buttered toast, especially with cinnamon and sugar on there. How about if I showed you this? A whole pack of cheese? Huh? A ham sandwich? Other guesses? All right, I got one more thing to show you. This should seal the deal. Are you ready? I heard it earlier. A grilled cheese. Yeah, I'm going to make a grilled cheese for lunch. All right, I love grilled cheese. It's one of my favorite meals. And Pastor Kiri told me earlier this week it was National Grilled Cheese Day. So I guess, you know, have to have a grilled cheese this week. Now, the more ingredients that I showed you, the easier it was to figure out what I was having for lunch. So I wonder, this kind of reminds me of the story today that we hear about Jesus. So Jesus died, has come back from the dead, and is just hanging out with his disciples for a while, which I find kind of crazy. We don't hear a whole lot about that or talk about the fact that Jesus stayed around for a while before he went to heaven. But I think about every time Jesus shows up and talks to his friends, it's kind of like another ingredient in a recipe. We need to see all those ingredients and see the whole recipe to get that whole meal. You weren't sure what I was having until you saw the whole recipe. And I see that when Jesus comes to his disciples over and over before he goes back to heaven, he's giving them more and more ingredients of the story. And he's saying, what about this? And how about this? And it becomes a fuller picture that then his disciples, those closest to him, go and share with other people. And now 2,000 years later, we're still hearing that story. And it's so important for us to get all those ingredients, all those parts of the story, so we can share them with other people. So people 2,000 years from now are going to hear that story of God's love too. All right? So then you're going to hear more about Jesus coming to his disciples in the reading that Pastor Maria is going to do right after this. But I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And so repeat after me prayer. So repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for the disciples. Thank you for the disciples who shared everything, who shared everything they saw and learned. They saw and learned from following Jesus, following Jesus. Please help us, please help us to do the same, to do the same. Amen. Well, our gospel for this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a tough week. Practically every morning, there's news of a tragedy. Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center, 
charges filed, newly released footage of Adam Toledo in Chicago, the FedEx warehouse in Indianapolis. All of this, along with updates of the trial in Minneapolis, peaceful protests, violence and looting, in addition to the continuing trauma of dealing with a pandemic. Trauma upon trauma for individuals, for families, for communities, for all of us. It's a lot. And that list isn't even complete. Saturday morning, I woke up and saw news that there was a ship that went down and they're trying to find survivors. I mean, there's so much going on. There has been a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And in the past few months, every time it feels like the wheels have come off again, the words that come to mind are from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? It's a good question. <laughs> what then are we to say about these things? I think we acknowledge the pain of everyone affected. We acknowledge the trauma. We acknowledge the suffering. We acknowledge the fear. We acknowledge the loneliness and sense of isolation. We acknowledge the grief, the loss. We acknowledge the struggles. We gather together to worship and we turn to the scriptures for a word of hope. In Luke, Jesus says words I know I need to hear today. He says, peace be with you. Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you. He says that to his disciples who just days earlier saw him crucified. I mean, they'd been through their own trauma. And with the empty tomb, they weren't sure what to think. They were amazed to hear that Jesus had risen from the dead. And later that day, on Easter, two of his followers walked to the village of Emmaus, talking about everything that had happened, and Jesus joined them as they walked. They didn't recognize him, so when he asked what they were talking about, they told him how their hopes had been dashed because Jesus had been crucified. And now they weren't sure what to make of the empty tomb. When they reached Emmaus, they invited him in for dinner, and as he blessed and broke the bread for the meal, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. So they ran back to Jerusalem to tell their friends, and they found the disciples telling each other, the Lord has risen and he's appeared to Simon. And then these two told what had happened on the road, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were all still talking about this, this is when Jesus stood among them and said, peace be with you. I mean, what a day those two had, huh? <laughs> to go from waking up in the morning with the sorrow of Jesus' death, then going to the news of the empty tomb, to the risen Jesus opening their eyes, going back to Jerusalem and Jesus showing up again to say, peace be with you. And therein lies the word of hope. Jesus shows up. In their sorrow, in their wondering, even in their joy, Jesus shows up. He is risen indeed. He's not a ghost. He is risen, raised to new life, raised to bring peace to people longing for peace. 1 John gives us even more hope. These verses remind us that God loves us, that we are children of God. We are loved children of God now which is an amazing gift. And what we will be has not yet been revealed. There's this hope of future transformation. I'm going to read those verses from 1 John, and then I'm going to ask you to think about what you hope for in that transformation, what you will be 
when you see Christ as he is. Now, I know that this might start to freak some of you out, like, oh no, is she gonna ask us to like say it out loud or tell somebody sitting next to us? No, I'm not gonna do that for you, okay? So just breathe easy, it's gonna be fine. Let your imagination go and think about what the scripture is saying and what do you hope for? What might that transformation look like for you? What do you hope it looks like? Here are the verses. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When Christ is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. What do you hope for? I'll give you some time to reflect on that. How do you hope to be transformed when you see Christ as he is? When the disciples see him in Luke, their minds are opened to understand the scriptures. Do you hope for your mind to be opened in some way? When the two on the road to Emmaus recognized him in the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened. Do you hope for your eyes to be opened in some way? Once their eyes were opened, they realized that when he had been explaining the scriptures to them as they walked along the road earlier, that their hearts had been burning within them, that they sensed something even before he was revealed as he is. What do you hope for? I'll tell you part of what I hope for. Actually, at this service, when I started reflecting, I started singing, Create in me a new heart, O God. Maybe somebody else needs a new heart too. But part of what I hope for is to be moved to loving action. Even though I feel like whatever I do will be inadequate. And maybe I'm the only one who feels like this, but with everything that's happened this past week, anything I can think of to do or say to make the world better just seems really insufficient. But that shouldn't stop me from doing what I can. Right? And this is the boat we find ourselves in. We're limited, but we're not without hope. We're only human, but we're empowered by the risen Christ. So I join those of you who dropped off food and other items to go to the food shelf that serves two elementary schools in Brooklyn Center. With looting in the area, there's more need. And when we're moved to loving action, we can help. How do you hope to be transformed by an experience with the risen Christ? And how will you see him? How and when is he now revealed to regular people like you and me? Well, today's scripture says he's revealed when hospitality is shown to strangers. He's revealed in the breaking of the bread. When people are together discussing him, Jesus shows up. He shows up and says, peace be with you. Those were written down for us. Those stories and more have been passed down by those who were witnesses of these things, and they give us hope. They were no strangers to pain and struggle and trauma. 
they lived in an occupied land where crucifixion was somewhat commonplace. So when we face pain and struggle and trauma, when we face brokenness in our time, what then are we to say about these things? What word can we bring? We bring a word of hope that all people are loved children of God, that Jesus shows up among us in the midst of whatever's happening. We bring a word of peace when we show hospitality to strangers. We give people a chance to see Christ's love in action, bringing peace and hope. We bring hearts that love, hearts that feel the pain of our fellow human beings, hearts that burn to spread Jesus' love, to transform our world. It's been a tough week. And this coming week probably won't be a picnic either. But you, beloved children of God, you go into this week with the risen Jesus. He goes ahead of you, beside you, and within you to bring peace and hope and love. Amen.
we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. Living God, in this Easter season, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures. Reveal yourself to us and fill us with peace, hope, and love so that this community of faith would become more and more like you in mutual love and bold witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, pour your blessing on Ava May Appling, baptized later today. May she always know that she is a loved child of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, bring healing to our world. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Brooklyn Center, in Chicago, in Indianapolis, and other cities. Be with those who grieve so deeply. Uphold those who serve in law enforcement. Be with each of us as we discern what it means to act justly and to love mercy and keep us humble as we do so. Bring justice to your world at home, in our communities, and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give courage to all who lead in these days. Grant your wisdom to national, state, and local leaders. As the trial in Minneapolis concludes this week and tensions may rise, guide the actions of all involved toward peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, heal your creation. We pray for those impacted by volcanic eruptions and other natural disasters. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we hear the cries of those in need and answer them in, your, in their distress. Send your healing to Kareen Jardin, Scott Patron, Chris Chapel, Audrey Lundstrom, James Nelson, Tad Riding, Dan Sloniker, Roy Reichow, Keith Hammerbeck, and those we name silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, with your promise of eternal life, comfort those who mourn today. Bonnie Grant at the death of her father, Roger Johnson. Judy Blomgren, the death of her uncle, Edwin Blomgren. Wendy and Gary Sundin at the death of Wendy's mother, Dolores Kochensky. And Corey Sawyer at the death of her mother, Carol Sawyer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We raise our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now is the time when we consider our offerings. If you're here in person today and would like to give an offering, there will be baskets by the doors. As you exit today, you can drop that there. Otherwise, you can mail a check to the church. You can give through the website, oursaviorslc.org, or you can text a dollar amount to 1-855-708-0699. Or you can sign up for automated giving by contacting our bookkeeper, Kim, in the church office. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Walk with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're worshiping with us at home this morning, this is the perfect time to make sure you've got that bread and wine or grape juice. As we share this meal, and I hear the crinkling here of everybody getting their stuff ready. Well done. All right. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember him as we pray the prayer he taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you receive this meal, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. God of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive a blessing. May the one who raised Jesus from the dead surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage and hope. Amen. Share the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.